Okay, so today's uh, title for, for the, uh, the set of presentations and the set of information we're getting, I just thought was a, a fabulous one, especially considering really where Intel is at the moment. Um, we've come off a project which has been enormous, um, really by any standard. Um, probably the best way of describing it is we had 350 virtual detailers working two shifts uh, to actually build out the plant we were doing. And we really started at a position where we knew nothing. This was 2012. And the, uh, the key elements I'd really be saying is, rather than read all the different uh, components there that you see in terms of you know, what's the size of it, um, it's actually the culture change that goes with this and the, the, uh, the dealings with large corporations in terms of uh, existing methods, existing silos of information, and actually trying to break it all down. So although this might look like the complicated part, the technical part is ultimately the easy part. Um, the ultimate goal of what we were doing was uh, driven by business need and is really all around converting our construction to a manufacturing process. And the, the term we used there was uh, ice cream vans, where you simply could not get enough people into the congested areas to build what we wanted to build. So we had to make everything off-site, and to make everything off-site drove virtual construction with full prefabrication, full uh, virtual coordination. Okay. So in terms of future-proofing, I think the key term is actually BIM or be BIMmed. What we're dealing with is ultimately complete and utter digital disruption. And uh, if we don't look ahead, we are going to be the one that's disrupted. So you have a choice, really, in terms of the BIM world of either to lead, engage, or just get run over, or just become obsolete. Um, the terms of the needs, <clears throat> again, I won't read through all these, but the, the bottom line is um, <clears throat> if we don't um, look ahead and actually see what's going to come, we're going to be as relevant as uh, some taxi firms may be in, a, in an Uber environment. So um, anyway, that's, that's the, probably the key element here. There's a, on top of this, the, the key thing to make all of this work together then is really getting into the standards world. This is a, a key element. So when we've got different groups, um, if we don't have standards, we don't have integration. We don't have integration we don't get the efficiency and we don't get the output we expect. Probably the most underviewed and underutilized um, and undervalued part of any BIM project is actually the, uh, the whole thing about information QA and the whole integration and standardization of information. So we have to think big and we have to uh, actually really work on standardizing language, standardizing um, different domains of, of, uh, of industry and get them all working in the, in the same methodology. There is a, an additional call here for experts, which is there's um, the uh, European standard CEN TC442 is, uh, is working quite actively at the moment. And uh, if we want to be relevant, we do need to engage. We do have a, a mirror group set up with the NSSI, NSAI, um, but there is a call out for technical people to actually engage directly in it. It's working really in conjunction with the ISO process as well. And uh, it's actually very, very key. Um, the way to describe it in terms of its importance is that the TC442 in, in CEN is the second largest committee ever in the CEN process, second only to fire safety. So a lot of people do realize how important this is and how important the standards are. So I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to just give a very brief overview of really kind of where we see it. Um, the...